There's a lot of things out there now that don't require a lot of technical skill to use, but you can still get the message across, things like many eyes and swivel and those types of things, which are a fantastic starting point. I've been using swivel lately um, for basic chart visualization and graphs and stuff. Uh, Google Charts, when I do development and I just want really easy quick charts to show up on a page that I build, I use Google Charts. There's Wordle, if you want word clouds to be easily generated, they're kind of static. Many eyes is another good example. It's so easy for people to do their own now. Like I have two reporters now who just figured out how to use Swivel. And so instead of being like, I have this Excel sheet, can you post it to the site? They're putting it in Swivel, they're posting the doc data for everybody, and then they're making their own bar charts, which is great. A lot of, um, um, like Swivel and Wagini and these kinds of things, have at least a basic tutorial, if nothing else, if not a code repository and a forum. The, the level of sophistication in a map that a lay cartographer can make just by using Google products, you know, easily accessible on the web, it's pretty astonishing what you can actually do just making use if you know kind of how you want to combine some of those things and make use of them. You need uh, knowledge in uh, social science, uh, you need to know the tools, you need to know your target group and um, you should be addicted to technology and you should have a kind of a vision. For people who are entering this now they should play to their strengths there's not a, there's not just one kind of person doing this sort of thing. As I mentioned, there are people who are specializing different ways, who make maps, who make animated diagrams, who deal with with data. From an educational standpoint, I think in addition to you know graphic design um, and computer programming are all very helpful, but a knowledge of statistics is also critical to doing this well. And so I expect that each of those will be you know things in the tool belt of you know this next century's journalists. I mean, I think the the start is like do it with a do it with a subject you're comfortable with. Do it with something you know. Do it with something that you care about. Um, just probably super generic advice, that's like the bar chart of advice, <laughs> but, um, but um, and I think you, you just get started with one, right, like, and then you build on that as it, as it grows. Well, you obviously need to know enough uh, technology, be it whatever form you want, Flash, HTML, uh, JavaScript, processing, and so on, to actually, like, like, you really want to think a lot about, like, what is important to show here, and how can I design it in a way that's clear, and, like, brings across a point of the story I'm trying to tell. Just because it's just you, that doesn't mean that you're never going to be able to pull it off. Um, like, there are a lot of people who can pull off a lot of amazing things by themselves. To keep abreast of what's happening nowadays, one, there's a real active blogosphere. Um, so blogs like Infosthetics, Flowing Data, Visual Complexity, and there's many others um, that I've left out. Um, a great place to keep up with kind of interesting discussions and debates within the field. A little more academically, there's um, a conference called you know, the IEEE Information Visualization Conference, and that's uh, one of the primary venues in which researchers are publishing papers about what they see as the state of the art of visualization and where they share new technologies that are being developed. It's a weird time. It used to be we have to explain to people what DIG was and what visualization was, and now, you know, we're getting calls from, uh, you know, name your cable station that are like, we hear the data visualization is to be found here. So it's kind of, it's a little strange actually. It's becoming a little checkbox on people's media plans. I'm not sure if I think that's the best thing ever or the worst thing ever. I'm leaning towards it being the best thing ever. I think you see really interesting groups doing fantastic work, like the folks at Stamen Design in San Francisco. Um, is it a whole movement? It's, it's a bit hard to say because I think we're still in a really nascent stage, but I'd say the initial signs are very positive. I think that we're kind of, all the stuff that we're doing now is kind of just the, like I'm in the early days of cinema. So what you see is this incredibly fluid flow of ideas. And to, to me, that's really what's exciting, is that maybe you know, 15 years ago, there were these very distinct silos. And people in completely different fields had no idea what they were, you know, ever, that everyone was working toward the same thing. But today, there's starting, it's starting to fuse. It's, start, it's fun. It's competitive. You know, we look around all the time and we're like, you know, where is the next you know, amazing thing going to come from? Over here? Over there? And we, we feel like, OK, the need to keep up, um, it's very energizing and enjoyable. And it shows the length of the day. They're the months of the year. It's a calendar. And you can see data visualization is here to stay, no question about it. It's not some passing fad that we're going to stop doing in about a year's time. In fact, we're just going to take it 
and it's going to be, become part of the whole information graphics package, no question about it. So uh, we better all get on board. <laughs>